Welcome to Let's Get Broncos. I am Brandon Perna. Today, guess what? We're talking about the Denver fucking Broncos. Yes, on a short week, and there's a lot to talk about. Today, I'll hit the three things the team needs to fix by Thursday and evaluate exactly how Paxton Lynch played and what that means for the team moving forward. Let's Get Broncos. Let's start with the good news. Right tackle, Donald Stevenson and tight end, Virgil Green, were both full participants in practice. Virgil Green has stated, I will play Thursday. I guarantee it. There's no way I'd miss an opportunity to beat Philip Lightning in my panties rivers on primetime. End quote. We assume, with the return of Stevenson at right tackle, that many of the Broncos' offensive line woes will be solved, or at least aided. As long as he's truly healthy, Stevenson will be a significant upgrade over Ty Sambrilo, who currently is playing worse than Michael Schofield was in the same spot last year. That leads me to the four reasons Atlanta beat the Broncos and how they can maybe fix them by Thursday. Reason number one, and this is in no particular order, but play at right tackle. Ty Sambrilo may not be healthy as he continues to recover from those elbow and shoulder injuries. He's also really still a rookie when you think about it. He's only started six regular season games. I don't know if Sam Brilo will be good in the NFL, but I know he needs to be 100% healthy before we can fairly evaluate him at the position. The Broncos kicked Schofield out to tackle, pulled Sam Brilo, and put Darian Weems in at right guard during the game. That's not ideal either, and it's a bit shitty that there continues to be issues in the exact same spot we witnessed last year. Depth is so important on the line, and if Stevenson or Okun get seriously injured, there will be some major problems up front for the Broncos. This leads me to the second reason the Broncos lost. They couldn't run the ball effectively, and Kubiak's offense relies so heavily on the run that unless you have a great quarterback, it's hard to succeed when it gets shut down. This is the one area I'm not sure will improve with the return of Stevenson and Green. On paper, it definitely should, but I think opposing teams are going to force the Broncos to beat them through the air. They will focus on making the run game difficult for this team. And so far, opposing defenses that aren't even that good have had success against the Broncos rushing attack. I think CJ and Booker will play better Thursday, but I'm not convinced that they can consistently wear teams down running the ball this season. Trevor Simeon should play Thursday. I think we learned why he's the starter for the Broncos, because the third reason they lost to Atlanta was Paxton Lynch did not play well. Rewatching that game was eye-opening as to how much he really needs to grow before I can give him a fair evaluation. He was not comfortable on Sunday. Part of that was because it was his first start. Another part of it was because protection sucked. And the final part was uh, he didn't throw well. Will Paxton make better throws as his footwork gets better? I don't know. Maybe he missed some easy throws because his feet weren't set. There were some dump off passes to running backs he missed. He threw behind a receiver and he overthrew Sanders by a mile in the end zone. I won't overreact, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about the way he throws the ball. I just don't think you can fix a quarterback who throws inaccurately. There's no solid evidence of that working anywhere in the NFL ever. But we don't know if Paxton truly is an inaccurate passer uh, because we haven't seen enough from him yet. Maybe it's nerves, maybe it's a, a whole bunch of things. Letting the game slow down for him, but only time can tell us this thing. John Elway and Peyton Manning both had shitty rookie seasons. Elway's completion percentage was 47.5, Manning's was 56.7 with 28 interceptions. So Paxton's first bad game doesn't doom him. He needs 15 more starts before we know who he really is. The one thing we knew about Elway and Manning from their college play is they were great passers. They were number one overall draft pick material. Paxton's college career is hard to evaluate, as is his future in the NFL. For now, let's just say we don't know, and instead focus on Trevor Simeon. Through three and a half games, he has a 67.3 completion percentage. That's really fucking high for a rookie. 
John Elway, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck, Jim Kelly, and even Tom Brady didn't finish their rookie seasons with percentages that high. Uh, well, it wasn't Aaron Rodgers' rookie season, but you know what I mean. Simeon has a smaller sample, and that could change after a full season, but the common thread among great quarterbacks is they typically complete 60 and 68% of their passes. Simeon was at 71% before he went down against Tampa. His closest comparisons are Russell Wilson and Ben Roethlisberger, who had 64.1 and 66.4 completion percentages in their first NFL seasons. I think based on his small sample size, Simeon has the potential to be a great NFL quarterback. High completion percentage usually translates to good decisions. If he's making good decisions in his first three and a half starts, how good will he be after a full season under his belt? And it's not that he just makes good decisions. He's extremely accurate and throws maybe the prettiest passes by any QB in Denver since Elway retired. Here's the one major question about Trevor Simeon. Can he stay healthy? He only made it through three and a half games before spraining his AC joint. He tore his ACL in college, uh, so if he's prone to injury, it won't matter how accurate he is. Finally, on the other side of the ball, Brandon Marshall and Todd Davis did not have good games against Atlanta. Every one of Tevin Coleman's big plays was due to a mistake made by Marshall or Davis. Part of this problem was that Coleman was a mismatch for both backers. Neither one could compete with his speed or his witchcraft. Not many teams have a Tevin Coleman, which is a good thing for the Broncos linebacking court. I believe Danny Trevathan could have matched up with Coleman. However, the Chargers lost Danny Woodhead this season to injury. I don't foresee the Broncos struggling with a pass catching back in this game. And I also believe Davis and Marshall are good linebackers. They won't get burned like that again. And Wade will figure out a way to cover a guy like Coleman if these two teams say meet in the Super Bowl. Broncos, Falcons, Super Bowl. So Broncos get their second back-to-back -back Super Bowl against the Falcons. That's how it has to go. You heard it here, pretty sure first. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure you subscribe here. Give me a follow on Twitter at Brandon Perna. I am on fucking Twitter at Brandon Perna. For all of your Denver sports news needs, check out bsndenver.com. And always share your love with the best Broncos blog on earth, Mile High Report.